This is kind of a spontaneous review, uh, little video I wasn't planning to even make. Uh, but later this week, I'm going to be reviewing this pen. And I'm using a document camera, which you can just see off screen here. Now, you, you've seen other videos of mine where I totally failed with this thing and had horrible audio. And I'm trying a couple things differently in the summer while I have time. Anyway, I'll be reviewing this pen later in the week. It's a Caveco Dia. It's a 1930s model. So it's very old and it has an oblique fine nib. So the point of this video is mostly to talk about some different kinds of nibs. And you won't even see my face. And don't worry, the lighting is awful on the pens, but when I get to the writing, it'll be better. Now just for quick comparison, so we know this is a modern Caveco Dia. A little bit bigger pen. This is a Caveco Sport. So the Caveco Dia is a lot more in common with the Caveco Sport in terms of size. But let's take these guys off screen for a second. What I'm going to do is I'm going to review... Let me make a little something for the autofocus to focus on. What I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about the different types of nib that you can get. Um, now, I am limited by what I have. So I wrote the word focus here. The reason is I learned through the year of teaching with this document camera that it needs something to focus on, and then it's fine. So it's just focused on the word focus. As long as I don't do anything weird to the paper, we should be golden. Now I'm going to show you a couple of nibs first that have absolutely nothing to do with uh, the Caveco, but they help prove my point. This first nib I'm going to show you, because he's not going to leave a dot on the paper, this is a fine nib. And I can roll him around uh, safely. Uh, obviously it's from an Edison pen, but not in a pen <laughs> at the moment. I do own an Edison, not an expensive one, but yeah. Anyway, you can see there's tipping material. That's pretty small, uh, pretty rounded, makes a nice even line. Now there is also a broad nib. Yes, there's a medium and an extra fine, but I don't own those sizes in an Edison. Uh, here's a broad nib, much thicker, just for comparison here. Yeah, <laughs> definitely a lot thicker. A lot of tipping material. And then they have, now this one I have to be careful, this is what they call a stub nib. This guy actually is inked up because I was trying out an ink and that's actually what inspired me to do this video. So this is full of ink, so I'm probably going to leave marks. This is a stub nib, a one and a half millimeter stub nib. So the result is, well, and also notice there's no tipping material. Most of your stubs do not have tipping material. Uh, make of that what you will. And then... I have the Caveco Dia, which is an oblique fine. Now, look at this. Let me hold this parallel to the line here so you can really see it. Is there something wrong? Why, yes, there is. The tines are not even lengths. This is cut at about a 15 degree angle, and that's what makes it an oblique. So to get a taste for that, I have a couple of pens going to use. So I'm going to start with the regular Caveco Sport and we're going to write a little bit of fine writing. And I'm holding this at an awkward angle because I'm right under this document camera and it's not easy. So this guy, let's go on this line here. This is the fine. Not a lot of line variation. You know, my verticals, my horizontals are about the same, my diagonals are about the same, my swirly doodles are, you know, and, and it's shaky because, as I said, I'm trying to hold it under the camera, which is awkward. Now next, I'm going to whip out a broad. I do not have my broad Edison inked up without making a mess, so we'll go with my broad, oh, actually, that's a really horrible example of a broad. Let's pretend I didn't almost do that. I have a broad here that's very stub-like. So this is a regular broad. Uh, it's a Schmidt nib and a Schmidt intrinsic. Like this pen a lot. So he's a broad. Uh, ideally for this comparison, all the inks would be the same, but they're not. 
again, not a lot of line variation and shaky because I'm holding it at a very awkward angle. I'll just uh, point out if I would have used this other broad, he is kind of stub-like. So that would have totally defeated my purpose. Okay, now to show you what I mean by stub-like, this is a 1.5 millimeter stub. Oh, okay, not impressive. 1.5. Verticals are very thick. Horizontals are very thin. Diagonals are pretty much the same. Uh, this pen, I'm actually more likely to write with at a slight angle like this, just because it's easier for me, but, you know, it is what it is. So you get definitely some line variation there. Now when I use an oblique fine, which would be my 1930s Caveco Dia, those you actually hold slightly rotated. Oblique. Whoops, there's an E in oblique. Fine. Since this is the star, he can have two lines. So first of all, my vertical strokes. The horizontal strokes. Oh, they look about the same. Funny that. Diagonal. Thick, diagonal, thin. The result is you end up, your thickest part of the lines are your ones that are in an angle. Now this pen also has the advantage of being a wet noodle. So when I write with it, I wish I had better light here, but whatever. I can actually get it open quite wide if I want to. But 1930s pens, I do not like to force. Uh, so we'll go without pressure. Again, the, the effect is subtle, but look where the line variation is. It's on the di uh, it's at the angled strokes, the diagonal strokes. So an oblique fine is just, it, it's hard to find oblique nibs. I don't know that I've run across them for sale. I know I've run across retailers that will grind them for you. Uh, at an extra cost, but I, I haven't really run into a pen that has them for sale. So I, it was kind of fun for me to run into this oblique fine nib, especially one that is a wet noodle. So uh, just to do a quick summary, and I'm just going to write this with, uh, well, what the heck, let's use this pen that didn't get shown off. So just as a quick summary, with your typical nib, you've got your blob of tipping material, and then it's on the nib like this. So this is a normal nib. So you don't get a lot of line variation. Now with a stub, most of your stubs don't have the tipping material. But this gives a long, or I'm sorry, a wide vertical stroke and a narrow horizontal stroke. Your oblique nibs, usually this is about a 15 degree angle. As far as I can tell, there is tipping material. And, uh, let's see, let's write a 15 in here. That's going to give you some line variation, but it's on the diagonals. Now, there is another type of nib that I know that I own that I didn't think to ink up for this, but let's go with it. Uh, we also have the music nib, which would have two tines, and the one that I have, well, two, both of the ones that I have, because I own a uh, Platinum and a Noodler's music nib. They'll have double slits, and they lay down a lot of ink. And again, they're, they're going to have the wide vertical strokes and the narrow horizontal strokes. And they're designed for writing musical notes, so you can use your imagination. Now, there are other cuts. There's a left-handed oblique, a right-handed oblique. There is uh, the cursive italics, which are just sharper. There are um, architect's points. Uh, there's more exotic nibs. I know Sailor has a bunch of exotic nibs. So we could get really crazy with all this, but you know, I, my whole point here was just to give you a brief idea. And uh, when I filmed the review for this, for this Caveco Dia, I realized it got too long because I started talking about what an oblique nib is. So I'm recording this video to show you an oblique nib and to give you some comparison so that you can see the difference between an oblique 
and the other nibs in writing. And there's, of course, the fun that this guy is uh, a very wet noodle type of nib. So I hope that was useful. It ran extra long, but I don't know. I think it was interesting. So this this week, Kaveco Dia coming. Next week, we're going to be doing the Goulet nibs.